Once we've identified that our problem is with regards to a binomial random variable, all we need to do is identify what is x, what is n, what is p, and what is k so that we can apply our binomial formula. Okay, I'm going to write x in words and also in numbers. x is the number of successes in general. It's the number of successes in n tries. So if I write that here, number of successes in n independent trials. What is x for this problem? In this problem, we're rolling a die three times and we're trying to find what? We're trying to find sixes. So we're interested in six. Six is actually our success. And so I'm going to write that here. So this is the number of sixes in three trials. In other words, we can write x as the number of sixes being zero, one, two, or three. That's the most sixes we could have. How many times are we going to look? We're going to look three times. What's the chance? That's what p is. I'll write that out too in words. p is the probability of a success each try. What is that? If we're going to roll a die, the chance of any of the outcomes 1 through 6 has a 1 in 6 chance okay, of occurring. And the possible outcomes are 0, 1, 2, or 3 sixes out of 3 tries. So for this problem, what are we interested in? Which one of these possible outcomes, which combination? We're told that we want to find the probability of at least one six. At least one six corresponds to one, two, or three sixes. So we're going to calculate probability x greater than or equal to one. What's the number? Another way to do that? Well, we could do this as 1 minus probability x equals 0. And there's two possible ways of answering this question. The k is referring to which of these we're going to calculate using the formula. Well, let's try it the long way and then you can try on your own and see that you get the same answer doing it the shorter way. Okay, I'm going to do this meaning I need special k don't like the cereal. We're looking for special K of one, two, or three. So what we're actually going to do is calculate probability x equals one or x equals two or x equals three, which is equal to probability x equals one plus probability x equals two plus probability x equals 3. Now, you don't have to write this every time. I'm just trying for illustrative purposes to teach you what you're supposed to be thinking about when you do this. Okay, so we need to apply the formula 1, 2, 3 times. I'm going to try and clear my board so we can do that, okay? All right, let's calculate the probability of at least one six. That's going to be the probability of one six, or the probability of two, or the probability of three. Applying the formula three times. What formula? All right, I'm writing the formula down here. However, I don't really want you to use it. I don't want you to be scared of forgetting it. 
and we're going to go through this several times so that you commit it to memory. I really don't want you to have to apply or be using this formula painstakingly each time. All right, I want you to think it through, but I don't want you to have to look down here. So let's try that. So we want to calculate the probability of one success. The number of ways of seeing out of three tries, one success, we write like that. The probability of a success is one six, and I'm looking for one success. The probability of no success or failure is five six. And if there's one success, then there must be two failures because these must total to n. So these exponents must make n of 3. That's supposed to be a 3. And these probabilities should sum to make 1 each time, okay? So we've just applied the formula once. Let's do the next one. So we're going to add that to the number of ways of seeing two successes out of three. We write like this. The chance of a success is one-sixth. And we're looking for two successes. That's our special K in this case, all right? That's a, so we're looking for, and the K goes here, the power of, uh, of the number of successes, two successes, and then the number of failures is the power of the failures, 5, 6. So since there's two successes, that leaves one failure to make a total of 3. And we're on to the next one. The number of ways of seeing three successes out of three tries times the probability of success. And we're going to see three of them. And if there's three successes and you only tried three times, then there's no failures. Okay, so that's how we apply the formula three times. Plugging this into your calculator. Let's do that together. To punch this in, you're going to press 3, second function, and there's a key, NCR, which is above the 8 key. And then you're going to press 1. And you could say equals if you want to see the answer is 3. And continue with times. To do this, to enter this fraction, you're going to press 1. And then there's a key, A, B, C, which will help create a fraction out of 1 and 6. Then, so you have 1, 6 in your calculator. Even though 1, 6 to the power of 1 is still 1, 6, I'm going to try and teach you this in general, okay? Now you're going to press the key that says y to the x, where 1, 6 is your y, and now you just got to press the X. This Y to the X key is right under the off button, if you don't know. So we're going to give the calculator the exponent, which is 1, and we're going to press times. We want to make 5, 6, so we're going to say 5, A, B, C, so it's a fraction again, and then press 6. And I'm going to continue below. So that gives you the power, sorry, it gives you the fraction 5 over 6. And then you tell the calculator you want to put that, so y to the x, 2. And say equals. That whole thing should give you the answer to just this one piece. If you're using the TI-36XA, the recommended calculator, that should be easy, actually. All right. 
So we have the answer, 0 0.3472. And I used four decimal places consistently when I solve binomial problems. Okay, let's try the next component. For this piece, keep in mind this is not 3 divided by 2, it's 3 choose 2. Entering that into the calculator is 3, second function, NCR, 2, and we can go right through times, 1, ABC, 6, and then take the power key, y to the x, 2 times 5 ABC times 5 ABC six and then we're going to put that to the power y to the x 1 and ask for the answer what is this equal and that answer is I'm going to add 0 0.0694 to four decimal places. For the last piece, you should be able to calculate this yourself, punching in the keys as I've shown you, or just simplifying. 3 choose 3, for instance. 3 choose 3 is what? It's the number of ways you can see three successes out of three trials. How many ways are there of seeing three successes out of three trials? If I was to represent the trials here and they all need to be successes, how many ways are there of seeing this? Well, it should be just one way. So this is actually one and it's no coincidence any calculation and choose K where they're the same thing will always be one. 5 divided by 6 to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1, so that will be 1. So all you've got to do is punch in 1 divided by 6 to the power of 3 and take it to four decimal places. You can punch that in as 1 ABC 6, Y to the X 3. And you should get the next piece, 0 0.0008. Sorry about that correction. You should have 0 0.0046. Putting these all together, now we have all pieces. Your final answer is 0 0.4212. So the chance of at least one six in three rolls of a die is 42%, 42.12%. Now how are you supposed to find your answer among all these uh, options below? These options are all fractions. How would you determine your answer? Well, first of all, process of elimination. This is not the right answer. Oh, sorry. We're going to find out that that's not the right answer. <laughs> this is not the right answer because it's bigger than one. And the others, we could just uh, turn the decimal, oh, sorry, turn the fraction into a decimal. 140 divided by 216. It's not the same answer, 0 0.6481. 125 divided by 216 is the next one. It's not, this is, and this answer is 0 0.5787. And finally, it better be this one, 91 divided by 216 is 0 0.42. One and the answer it's a little bit off and that's only because we rounded all the way through
and we have a different decimal, but this is the correct answer. Now, how could you get all these fractions? I'll show you quickly how you might do that. So let's try this one last time, but let's maintain the fractions. Three, choose one. Rather than punching in our calculator, this is a simple one. How many ways are there of seeing one success out of three? Just quickly, one success out of three, one is a success and the other two are failures. How can we see this as one success and two failures that way? And then only one more way. Is this a coincidence? No. In fact, every time there's a one here, no matter what the n is, the answer to this n choose one will always be the value n. Okay, number of ways of seeing one thing uh, as a success out of n tries. So this would be three. I'll change the color of my pen. Three. No. Fix that. So three times one over six times 5 over 6 to the power of 2 plus 3 choose 2 if you punch this in your calculator you also get 3 similar reasoning as before the number of ways of seeing two successes out of 3 for the same the same sort of uh, argument as we used here the answer is going to be 3 ways and then 1, 6 to the power 2, 5, 6 to the power 1. And this is 3, choose 3. Whenever we have, like I just showed you earlier, whenever it's n choose k, it's, uh, where the n and the k are the same, this will always be 1. So we don't even have to write it. 1, 6, 3, and anything to the power of 0 is always uh, 1. So we just have to write that. So putting this all together, we're going to get 3 times 25 over, there's 2, there's going to be two sixes here, and then one more six. With six to the power of three plus three times five over six to the power of three plus one over six to the power of three. And guess what six to the power of three is? This is two sixteen. And if you add all these up, you should get 91. So your answer is going to be D. The final point I have to make is one I started with. One other way to answer this question, where x can be 0, 1, 2, up to n, in our case, x can be 1, 2, or 3, or alternately, we could be calculating probability x greater than or equal to 1 as 1 minus probability x equals 0. That's the composite or the complement of these. It's just 0. So we could calculate x equals to 0 and then subtract it from 1. So try that and see if you get the same answer that we did.